Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is in a diploid species of plant the genes for plant height and fruit shape are on the same chromosome and separated by 22 uh, map units. Allele D produces tall plants and is dominant to uh, recessive allele D, small d for short plants and allele capital R produce round fruit and is dominant to small r or recessive allele r for oval fruit. A plant with the genotype that is capital D small r and small d capital R produce gametes with what genotypes? Label uh, non-recombinant and recombinant gametes and give the frequency of each gamete genotype. First of all, I want you to pay attention to the genotype which is capital D small r and small d capital R and we have a slash here. It is not the same as for example capital D small d and capital R and small r because in this case we have two genes gene D and R on the different chromosomes but when our notation is capital D small r slash small d and capital R that means that gene D and R on the same chromosome and here gene D and R would be inherited independently would uh, assort independently because uh, these two genes are on the different chromosomes and I'm saying two genes those we see here uh, four letters but each letter here stands for um, different allele. So we have two variants of the allele for the gene D and two variants of the allele for the gene R. But in this example gene D and R on the same chromosome and uh, small d and capital R also would be on the same chromosome but this chromosome would be inherited, say, from the mother side, and this would be inherited from the father side. That's why uh, we can find different genotypes for the same type of um, chromosome. So, what we have, we have one chromosome here. So, here is going to be centromere, and here is another chromosome, centromere here and we have capital D here and small r here and on the other chromosome that is homologous chromosome we have in the same locus uh, allele that is small d and allele that is capital R so one chromosome inherited from the mother side another homologous chromosome inherited from the father side and in the same locus we have the same gene so gene T here and gene R here but due to some maybe even point mutations uh, we may have different alleles even if one uh, nucleotide would be different uh, between these two uh, variants that means new type of allele so one can be dominant, another can be recessive. Sometimes a new type of allele has no uh, dominance over the other variants. But here we see dominance. If alleles don't have dominance one over another, usually we can say that one allele would be D1, another would be D2 or D3 and so on. So what's going on? during meiosis each chromosome here would make its own copy so now we would have uh, copies of these chromosomes that would be connected in the uh, centromere and of course because this uh, new uh, chromosome would be a copy of this chromosome we would have a capital D here and this chromosome would be copy of this chromosome so we would have small d 
here and we would have small r here and capital R here. The actual view would be that two homologous chromosomes would be connected in the uh, centromere and also we see here sister chromatids. So before these two chromosomes would separate we do not consider them as separate chromosomes. We consider this as sister chromatids and this is going to be one chromosome, this is going to be second chromosome and uh, this is going to be sister chromatids and both these two chromosomes would be homologous chromosomes. So this is going to be actual view from the side and this is going to be a view from the top. So this um, four sister chromatids or these two chromosomes would make one structure that we call tetrachromosome or tetrasome for short. So uh, what different variants we may get here uh, that would be a result of the division during meiosis. And we may get one, one variant of the gametes of the parental genotype. So this is going to be a chromosome with allele capital D and small r. Another variant would be also parental genotype that is small d and capital R. So small d allele here and capital R allele here. And also if crossing over would happen somewhere here. Actually it can happen in many places here. Uh, we may get a new recombinance. And the one variant would be variant with capital D here and capital R here. And another chromosome would have a small d small d here and small r here. So we do not see none of these genotypes in uh, parents. So this is going to be parental genotypes and this is going to be recombinants. If once again crossing over would happen here. Now let me increase this part of the picture. So this is going to be non-sister chromatids. So this is going to be one, here is going to be second. And here we have dominant uh, allele D. Here we have recessive allele D, recessive allele R and dominant allele R here. And as you see, the greater would be distance between two genes the more frequent crossing over might happen because this may happen in many places but what would happen if gene r locus for this gene would be close to the uh, gene d in this case as you see crossing over frequency would be less so if we would know uh, the frequency of the crossing over between two genes, we can say that gene D and R with uh, close together on the same chromosome or uh, would be on the different ends of the chromosome. And basically uh, we can map uh, the whole chromosome if we would count a crossing over between different genes on this chromosome and we even can find the order in which these genes go on the same chromosome if we would use three-point crosses. Those you see here that many crossing over may happen, but imagine what would happen if crossing over would happen not once, but say once one time here and the second time here. We would get the same original uh, situation where we would have 
dominant T on one chromosome and small r or dominant allele and recessive allele r on the same chromosome. And if this would happen three times crossing over, then we would see once again a new recombinance. So uh, we cannot get more than 50% a rate of recombination. And we can get this maximum rate when two genes would be on the uh, different ends of the chromosome. And if two genes would be close together, we can get a number that is going to be smaller than 50%. For example, like in our case, 22 MAP units. And 50% crossing over between two genes, we consider 50 MAP units. So we also can say 50 MAP units. Or we also can say 50 centimorgans. And in our case, 22 centimorgans or 22 MAP units tell us that these two variants of the genotypes in gametes, so each uh, chromosome here would be found in different gametes. So uh, in different gametes we can find different genotypes. And these two in the middle would represent uh, genotypes that is going to be recombinant. And according to our problem, frequency would be 22%. That means that uh, frequency of this genotype would be 11%. This genotype also would be 11%. So 11% plus 11% would make 22%. And that means that uh, 100 minus 22 going to be 78. 78 divided by 2 would give us frequency of the um, parental genotypes as 39% and 39%. Once again, what was our questions? A plant with uh, the following genotypes produce gametes with what genotypes? So this is going to be genotypes. Label non-recombinant. So this is going to be non-recombinant. The same as we can find in parents. And recombinant gametes. And give the frequency of each uh, gamete genotype. So here is going to be genotypes of the recombinant gametes. And here is going to be frequency of each genotype. 39, 11, 11 and 39. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.